This is the plaintiff, Connie Collins. She says she's an animal lover who currently has 14 dogs, three horses, a cat, and she used to have a beautiful pony named Ginger. That is, until the defendant's vicious dog got loose once again and attacked Ginger, ripping her face off and brutally killing her. Ginger was a member of her family. Another one of her horses had to be put down because it had a nervous breakdown over the loss of Ginger. And she's suing for the state max of $10,000. For all, she's out. This is the defendant, Joseph Solario. He says he knows the plaintiff thinks his dog killed her pony, but he didn't. Another type of animal did. His dog and the plaintiff's dog were friends, and his dog often dug under the fence to go play. It was never an issue until her pony was killed. The cops exonerated his dog because the bite marks didn't match up. It was determined another animal did it. And he's sorry for her loss, but he's not responsible. He's accused of... A big pony problem. All parties, please use your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn you on. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Miss Collins, you are suing your neighbor, Mr. Solario, for $10,000 that you say you are out as a result of his dog getting loose and attacking and killing your pony. Three dogs. Three dogs. Tell me what happened. The dogs... Orig uh, the original two dogs was, was a puppy and an older dog, and they dug under half a dozen times, and um, they weren't a huge threat, but I did tell them, I said, look, you can't have these dogs over here because there's going to be an accident. I have small dogs, and sometimes the small dogs go down with me to feed the horses, and he and I would push them back under the fence and fill up the hole and then call him and tell him, hey, look, you know, you got to keep these dogs over there. Um, but those were the only two that had come over was the older dog and the puppy. And he said, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll keep them over here. I'll, I'll do something. And then the dogs disappeared. So I assumed, I said, okay, fine. He took the dogs somewhere else to live somewhere else. Does he live there? He lives next door. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He lives in that house next door. Well, he's never there. Okay, so, but is that where he puts his head down? Do, do you, you lay your head down to sleep there? Is that your, where you live, or is that a second place, or what? That's where I live, Your Honor, but I'm, uh, I don't understand how she knows that I'm not there. Was she spying on me or something? I guess. She's there's looking no, for you to no talk to you to tell there. you that your darn dogs keep coming across the way. <laughs> no. So had she told you before that your dogs were getting it over there? Um, she did uh, approach me once about it, but the reason I, I, started, I found out why my dogs were going over there is because she was feeding them and she was actually leaving a bucket with water there. So she was kind of- How, Why would you think that was for your dogs that are fenced in on your property? Uh, because it's on my side of my property. She tied a, a bucket to, the, to a fence and threw it over my property, and this was on my property. Because he's to, never there, and the dogs were thirsty. It's, it's 100 degree heat. Okay. And they're out there going, <laughs> so I lowered a bucket on the other side, and I filled it with, I mean, and we love animals. I filled it with water, Okay. because I felt bad, and he's never there. All right, so then what happens? Well, you know, when I told him, he said, okay, I'll, t I'll take care of it. And, and had she told you to please take care of it and make sure that they don't, you know, I mean, she could, if she's putting a bucket of water there on your side, lowering it because you're never around to, and they're panting, that's a far cry from inviting them onto her property. Either way, a fence solves the problem. It should solve the problem. So what measures did you take to make sure your dogs didn't get over there? Um, well, I, I left them in the media back. I left them in the media backyard. So I have an extended backyard, which is an acre lot, roughly around there. But I left them in the immediate backyard, that's which would I, keep them away from the part where they had been digging. Yes. All right. But then on the day in question, had you let them go into the big one? I did let them go out to the big one because there was no concern anymore. Because apparently the bucket missed, uh, disappeared. There was no bucket there anymore. Right. But what was the integrity of the fence? Like the at some point, you put chicken wire there. I, I did put chicken wire. I also put some actual, I think they, build, they call them um, pallets, some pallets ac across the, uh, the fence. Pallets? Sure, yes, pallets. What are you talking about? Describe what you're talking about. Um, like they're, they're wooden cartridges. Yeah, wooden okay, so you put some wood there, um, and then according to you, none of that worked because one fine day you walk outside, and what do you notice? Well, I walk through the gates, and, and here's these, these three big dogs, and they're charging at me, and they're covered with blood. And, and I said I, I couldn't find Kayla. Who's Kayla? That's, that's the husky that we have that lives down there with the, the horses. 
and uh, I couldn't find her. I thought, oh my God, they killed Kayla. But when I went to the back of the property, Kayla was, was in the corner, and um, the other corner was my pony with his face ripped off, muzzle and everything. And uh, Kayla had some punctures in her neck, but she was okay. It wasn't anything that needed stitches, and she, you know, so she was gonna be able to deal, but the pony was, was gone. How uh, old was the pony? 26. And then you would use that horse, you would rent that horse out for mm -hmm. parties? Birthday parties for okay. kids, yeah. What is the life expectancy of a pony? 40. You originally sued for the value of the pony and set it at 3,000. You walked in here today and set it at 6,000. Where well, did that come from? Well, because it was, I, I, I could never replace the pony for that, for that price. And it, it takes years and years of, of training for ponies to be able to go into a strange atmosphere, get into a horse trailer, go into a strange atmosphere with balloons and clowns and characters jumping around. I, I can never begin to replace him for, for that amount. And I don't even remember where that amount came from. Well, but, you're gonna, I hope you do because you're going to have to prove it to me now. Well, if yeah, that's what I'm you're sorry. asking for. I, where do yeah. you get well, your evidence it, about what a pony costs? Yes. I need to see that now because yes. you're trying to establish that in a court of law that you're right. entitled to either three thousand or six thousand. Yeah. So um, you have an estimate? Do you have like how how are you coming up with your figures? Uh, well, mostly through like the Horse Trader magazine and um, places where they they sell. Well, can I horses? see that? I, don't have Okay, that. but you can't just say a number, you know? Yeah. Right? So what breed was the pony? Welsh. He was a Welsh pony. Welsh pony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you contact him when you see that the pony's gone? Yeah, I called him right away. I was like, oh my God. And I, I called him and he said, well, my dogs didn't, didn't do that. And I said, well, they're in my yard. They're covered with blood. The pony's <laughs> his face ripped off, and, you know. And and he said, "Well, are the dogs there now?" And I said, "No. I called animal control, and they came and and took them." Um, and he said, "Well, you know." So did animal control contact you? Animal control did contact me May twelfth, two thousand eighteen, and I was at the time I wasn't home. I just recently got a promotion for uh, becoming an assistant fire engine operator, so I was uh, living at a humble county state. So you weren't living at that place? It's still my primary residence, but my job, uh, my job, my job or my occupation as a, a wildland firefighter deems me to sometimes be gone. Okay, so time. who takes care of the dogs when you're gone? My brother. Okay, does he live there too? Yes. Okay, so go on. When she called me, I said, are you still feeding my dogs? And she says, no. She said, no, I'm not feeding your dogs anymore. Okay, so that immediately states right there that she was feeding my dogs, intentionally leading them, and... It's kind of funny because prior to this incident happening... Okay, but you had told me that already that prior to this incident, she had told you that she, you know, to please keep your dogs in, contained. And she says she would... Would you feed them animals too, or would you just give them water? Oh, I threw them a few biscuits, okay. you know, once in a while. Right, so, but... you know, that's not the greatest idea if you don't want them burrowing. Like, if you know an animal is burrowing and then you become a place they want to burrow too... That's kind of not the best idea. Mm. But in any event, you still have a responsibility to keep your animals on your side. What, what did you think had happened? I mean, you know that your animals, how many of his animals got into your yard? Well, I, there was three there when I went through. There was another, the older one was still on the other side, but I don't know if it'd come through and gone back okay. or not. So since then, you've installed a fence. Yes. And that's worked. Yes. Have absolutely. you stopped feeding the animals? Oh, yeah. No, okay. I, I no. Hmm. When this happened, when had been the last time that you had f thrown a biscuit or, f or given water? About a year. All right. So um, what happened with animal control? Um, so I have a documentation here stating that from all the evidence that was collected, that they threw out the case because there wasn't enough sufficient evidence to deem my dogs liable of what they might have been Let me see of. the evidence that you're saying. Thank you. Did anyone take a picture of the hole? Yes. Yeah, we have yes. as evidence. What's this a picture of? Uh, those are the dogs. Whose dogs? His dogs. When they came over the fence, under the, the fence. and um, then What I kind of dogs are these? They're boxers. boxers. Okay, and, what, and you have leashes around them? Well, yeah, I put them in a, a stall. I have other horses out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I put them in a stall and call animal control. What are these pictures of? Pictures of the, the fence. Um, I can't really tell. Yeah, and the pre-existing condition of the fence and part of it. 
uh, the backyard of the neighbor. There are also under oh a my folder Lord. that says hole yeah. in fence. Is this the pony? There's yeah, that's so so high resolution photos. It was horrible. Just horrible. Who is this dog? Which dog? That's is Kayla. That? She lives back there with us. How's Kayla doing? She's good. She's fine. This is the older dog that didn't go through the hole? I didn't see that one over. She was just sitting there. Everyone so. was just so cavalier about the problem, you know, because this is so obviously a problem. This fence isn't even properly installed. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, basically the dog can go and the dust moves and they can freely come over. And Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So, could two boxers do something that bad to a pony? With the pony just standing around, I definitely think that without intervene, the dogs would go they're, they're, they're slobbery dogs. You know, they have big jowls. Are they capable of that? I don't know. Dogs are unpredictable, possibly. What do you say? You're going to be the last word. I think, I think they can be aggressive at times. They can be aggressive. I'm just wondering if they got the chompers. Uh, I guess they do, uh, going inside the courtroom. So I did look through here. There is a page where um, these folks decide that without an eyewitness to it, it is insufficient to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that your dogs did it. Yes. Okay. Also keep in mind, Your Honor, that we live in a very remote area. It's a, it's a desert, and it has been known to coyotes roam the area. Were there, was there any evidence of a coyote there? No. Okay. No. Uh, unlike animal control, I have absolutely no problem finding that your dogs are responsible for the death of the pony. Um, zero. The only thing that causes me to hesitate is the feeding of your dog over there, uh, or at any time, um, which kind of invites the dog. Um, it's lunacy to me. If you really want to keep animals separate, how anybody could think that a rolled up chain link fence, because it's literally rolled up, uh, was gonna keep, with, around dirt, was gonna keep the dogs away, or placing some pallets there that got moved away by these strong dogs was gonna keep the dogs away. It's, it's, I just don't understand. I don't understand how anybody thought these dogs were gonna be ending up kept separate. Um, you want me to order him to pay you $3,000, which is half of the fence. The first question I have for you is, can you prove that the fence cost $6,000? The fence? I, no. Well, then how we am I gonna, have... let's start with that. Um, and your defense to that is the fence is something she's choosing to do. Why should you have to pay for it? Yes. I understand how you feel like, hey, I had to put this fence in because you don't contain your animals. Um, and that may be true. You had to put the fence in because his animal wasn't contained. But that doesn't translate into a legal obligation for him to pay for the fence. That's something you chose to do, and it was a smart thing for you to choose to do. Well, we had to keep our animals yes, safe. Yes, absolutely. But that doesn't translate to an obligation on his part to pay for the fence. It just doesn't. Um, so I'm not finding in your favor on the fence. The removal of the pony is something you're entitled to. I need to see a receipt for that. Do you have a receipt for the 250 that you said it cost? I, I have a canceled check. Uh, That's fine. On the pony, uh, I, I value, and this is very rough justice because you brought me zero to set a value. I've gone on the internet to try to set a, a, a value on a comparable animal, which is almost impossible because of the age of the animal. But I'm valuing it at 1,800, not at 3,000, not at 6,000. Um, and I am finding in your favor in the amount for the removal of the pony, which comes to $2,050 total on your claim against him. I'm not finding in your favor on lost wages. Um, so that is a net judgment then in favor of the plaintiff and the amount of $2,050. That's my judgment. Good luck, folks. <sighs> plaintiff is the only one who prevails in just a little over $2,000 at that. Mr. Solario, what about your dogs? Are you, are you worried about them? Do I'm, you I'm, think they could have done that? Yeah, I know you said they weren't proven, but do you think they could have? No. Are you afraid? Well, you know, any well, reason to be afraid of them? Well, I would be afraid of my dogs losing their life, but that's not the case anymore. They're in my possession, and I'm just glad to have them back. Okay. All right. Good enough. Thank you very much. Sorry it worked out that way for you. Uh, Ms. Collins and her husband are over their, their way out of the courtroom. Boxers aren't known to be, if you step over here, please, they aren't known to be that kind of, and if you'll step back a little bit, <laughs> okay. directing traffic here. 
that kind of vicious animals, aren't they? No, I, I didn't really expect that. Um, I didn't realize that they could, could actually kill my pony. But he was a beloved pet, and um, he made a lot of children happy. And he was just a wonderful pony, and his loss is... So in your mind, there's no question they were, those dogs did it, right? Well, it's not rocket science. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I okay. mean, that's, right. you know... All right. Well, yeah. you didn't get paid back for the recovery for the fence, but it's a good thing you have the fence, you know? Oh, we love the fence. Good for you. Yeah, we can't, we can't do without the fence. Okay. We, we love well, that, got it. and it, yeah. we got to keep our animals safe. Good for you. All yes. right. Thank yes. you very much. It's Thank you. You're, a, you're an Thank animal you. lover. Very oh, good. yeah. We love our pets. Thank you, folks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Harvey? So, I mean, look, the pony was 26, the life, expect the life expectancy is 40, and the judge just had to do rough justice here and figure out what a 26-year-old pony might be worth.